This March, I brought my boyfriend Austin to my hometown of Vancouver to meet my family. I showed him around Richmond and Vancouver, did a little thrift shopping, met my super smart and super cute niece, but most importantly, we ate our faces off. Between my mom's Michelin star cooking and my family's favorite restaurants, we gained 5 pounds in 10 days. But it was worth it because nobody does Asian food like Richmond. Our eating journey began at the United Club Lounge at SFO. It wasn't remarkable, but hey, who doesn't love free food? I watched Encanto on the short two-hour plane ride, and before I knew it, I was greeted with bonjours from the friendly Canadian customs officers. My first order of business was giving my mom the birthday present I made for her. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> I like the color, too. Yeah, it's black. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> I had to rush it. I made it in five days. <laughs> Stay tuned to see how I made this $2,000 designer bag for $10. Since Austin and I weren't able to join for the actual Chinese New Year dinner, my mom whipped up another one for us to enjoy. There were noodles, salad, squid, cha siu. She even made sticky fried rice, which is one of my favorite dishes. This Chinese salad is called yusheng. It has lots of ingredients like carrots, fresh fish, radish, crushed peanuts, and plum sauce, which all have symbolic meanings. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Everyone is invited to mix the salad while saying auspicious wishes and tossing as high as possible to reflect future fortune. <laughs> the next day, Peng and Kat gave us a tour of their lovely new two-bed, two-bath condo. It's got a huge patio, it's really close to my parents' place, and it's outfitted with all of the newest finishings and appliances. It kind of makes me wonder why I'm still choosing to live in the Bay Area where my elevator looks like it was built in the late 1800s. If you want to see a more in-depth video about Peng and Kat's condo, let me know by giving me a thumbs up or commenting on this video. Later that day, we went for a walk along the dike and played some tennis in a preemptive attempt to burn off some calories from the upcoming meals. My mom does this thing where she bribes me to get up early by making delicious waffles. And by getting up early, I mean 10 a.m. Which is not always easy to do, but the waffles definitely make it easier. Every time I go home, I make a point of visiting my favorite consignment store. It has tons of designer items that are in excellent condition. I've been shopping here for well over 10 years and I always find something that I love. This time, I noticed that they even had like 5 or 6 racks that were completely dedicated to Ritzia clothing. After about 30 minutes of shopping, I ended up finding about 25 pieces to try on. This dress was a no, and so was this bomber. I also didn't choose this rain jacket or this tennis skirt which my mom bought, but I did get this pantsuit and this maxi dress, and I also got a pair of jeans. Here's Kara getting her hair washed. <laughs> poutine was on the top of Austin's list of things to eat, so we had poutine accompanied by smoked meat sandwiches, which made for quite the classic Canadian lunch. That night, the feasting continued with a hearty hot pot dinner. The next morning, I was once again bribed to wake up early with blueberry pancakes. Here's my dad cutting napkins in half to save money. I've mentioned in my other videos that he does this, and here is proof. He even saves those little bits at the end to clean smaller things. He says this is super environmental. It's environmental, yes. That afternoon, Austin and I drove to downtown Vancouver for a little change of scenery. Luckily, the weather was very nice for our little excursion. We checked out the Olympic Cauldron at Jack Pool Plaza, and then we walked along the water and checked out the view of the mountains. What would you rate Vancouver? Oh man, food is a solid 10. <laughs> food is insane. Weather? Oh, uh, not great. It's not great. What is that smell? It's kind of poopy. Ugh. Let's go get some Tim Hortons. Sorry, sorry. We're gonna get some Tim Hortons. I am a pretty big fan of Tim Hortons, but I must say that this was one of the most underwhelming experiences I've ever had. We burned off our half-eaten stale donuts by walking along the seawall. Apparently the donut was so bad that Austin's walking was seriously impaired. After strolling along the seawall, we slowly made our way to Robson Street, which has a bunch of shops. All Austin ever wants to do in Aritzia is check out the plants. It turned out to be a really nice afternoon to just observe the chill hustle and bustle of downtown Vancouver. That evening, my Aunt Rachel treated us to a lovely dinner at the Coal Harbor Cactus Club where we had delicious food and amazing views. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. thank you, everybody. <laughs> the next day, my mom received this tennis racket which was a surprise birthday present. My dad taught me how to string the tennis racket while Kara showed off some tennis skills of her own. 
You're so cool. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the food. This is Top Shanghai, which features Northern Chinese food. They have an insanely huge menu that is filled with delicious Chinese food that is all very affordable. This was one of Austin's favorite restaurants on the trip. Everyone has a different style. <laughs> Hang bites at the top. Oh, that is so good. Their xiaolongbaos are some of the tastiest I've ever eaten. Oh my god. Look at all that soup. Wow. I don't know. How does that bar food? So good. I would say the highlight of this meal was probably the you tiao. It was super crispy and light and delicious. They served it with warm and sweetened soy milk, and if I closed my eyes, I kind of felt like I was eating breakfast in Shanghai. Can you hear that crunch? Then we traded in our bows for ice cream and explored Steveson Village, which is a quaint little fishing village in Richmond. Even though we were freezing our butts off, we still managed to enjoy our ice cream. This area of Steeston is called Fisherman's Wharf, and in the summertime, it's usually packed with fishing boats that are selling fresh fish. When we got home, I graciously offered to help my mom taste test her mango cream puffs. Do you need more mango? Hmm, that's good. Good? Yeah. Don't need any more mango? Um, uh, I think you could, but it's pretty good. My mom is an absolute savant in the kitchen. As if these cream puffs weren't impressive enough, <laughs> she was also preparing a roast beef meal for dinner. Meanwhile, my dad was, well, I don't really know what he was doing, but he's always fixing something. And here, we have some rare footage of Peng actually pitching in in the kitchen. He's shaving some fresh horseradish. Watch the master. Peng also happens to be our resident roast beef carver. I don't really remember what happened the rest of the night because I had a massive food coma, but the next day, we were back on the eating grind at Barbecue Master. My family and most of Richmond have been loyal customers of Barbecue Master since before David Chang and Seth Rogen made it cool. <laughs> That's crazy how busy it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You know. Is it good? You, got, you should try a piece of soy sauce. After our very filling roast pork lunch, we made it over to Rec Beach, which is a clothing optional beach that is located on the university endowment lands of the University of British Columbia. Since it is a clothing optional beach, it's always a somewhat eye-opening experience. How does this compare to Cocoa Head? Oh, this is like a walking park. Right? Okay. This is nice. I'm pretty tired though. Yeah, milk tea. Milk tea. After climbing the long set of stairs back up from Wreck Beach, Peng and Kat showed us the Harry Potter room in one of the libraries at UBC. It's actually called the Ridington Room and it's one of four silent study areas in Irving. The UBC campus is one of the most beautiful university campuses I've ever seen. Honestly, it kind of makes me wonder why I didn't choose to go here. I ended up going to UCLA, which is just as beautiful, but it's a totally different vibe. After our quick UBC tour, we checked out the beach behind Chip Wilson's house. Chip Wilson, if you're not familiar, is the founder of Lululemon. Then we went to Granville Island. Welcome to Granville Island, Austin. This is the artisanal center of Vancouver. What do you think so far? Pretty artisanal. It's very quaint. Look at those paintbrushes. There's a market here that has really good food. Yeah? Tasty. Is this where you have to pay an arm and a leg to eat? Yep. We found lots of meats, snacks, produce, and other food at the public market, which is open from 9 to 6 daily. I was feeling a little stuffy inside, so I stepped out for some fresh air and a view of False Creek. For dinner, we stuffed ourselves with delicious Malaysian food from John 316. In another attempt to keep things in balance, we played two hours of tennis with Peng and Cat to try to burn off those calories. But then afterwards, we went to Snowy Village and got Bingsu, so I think it's safe to say that we ended up putting all of those calories back into our bodies. <laughs> the four of us shared a large mango Bingsu and a large red bean Bingsu, and both of them were delicious. For lunch, we went to Pho 37, where Peng, Austin, and Kat all got number 37, which has a very hearty, burnt citrusy broth that is wow. unlike anything I've awesome. tasted before. For dinner, my mom made pork short ribs, veggies, and beef brisket. For our last lunch, we ate at Ichiro, which offers very high quality and well-priced bento boxes. On our second last day, we got a pre-departure COVID test for $60 at this location. <laughs> we got cheesies, crispers, and I bought out 
two rows of double-sided tape. For our last dinner, Peng, Kat, Austin, and I went to Miku, which is a fancy and delicious Japanese restaurant. For appetizers, we ordered Brussels sprouts, shrimp fritters, hamachi carpaccio, and soba noodles. Then we devoured all of the oburi sushi and all of the sushi rolls, except for the garden roll, which we didn't order. We topped off our dinner by sharing two orders of dessert. And there you have it, 10 full days of eating in Vancouver.